Hello, today I'm going to show you how you can use plants that you might already have in your garden like dahlias or eucalyptus and lots of other things as well and with a quite an easy process you can turn them into beautiful fabrics. And if you want more instructions I've also written a blog post which I'll link below. <laughs> So in my last video, which I'll link up here, you might have seen me go along to a dye workshop and get all infused about having a go myself with plants from the garden. Um, so I've been experimenting and I've managed to produce two lots of beautiful colours, as I say, using eucalyptus and dahlia. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And for equipment, equipment that you'll need um, if you've if you've looked into any sort of natural dyeing or eco printing you might find it's a bit of a minefield because everybody seems to have a different opinion of how and what you should use and there's so many different mordants and the mordant is what you need to fix the colour to the fabric so it's colour fast um, but to simplify it I'm just using one that's called aluminium lactate so this is um, this kind of the safest one with any with the least sort of problems with it that you could use both for the environment and for people. And because you need to weigh quite small amounts, you just use 10% um, of the dry weight of the fabric. You do need some little mini scales because you need to be able to um, go into a smaller quantity than grams, but you can pick these up quite cheaply. Then the other thing you need is a dedicated pot. I've got a big stainless steel pot that you'll see that, and just use that for dyeing or that sort of thing because you don't obviously don't want to use it, then use it for cooking. And you can just use your regular cooker. I've got this old double burner, um, so I can keep it away from sort of kitchen things. But as long as you're careful, I don't see why you can't do it on your regular cooker. So I'll now show you the what I did and then at the end I'll reveal the lovely fabrics. So what I like to use is there are lots of different sorts of aluminium. This one is called aluminium lactate and it's a byproduct from the sugar industry. Um, and it's it's much the most sort of environmentally friendly of all the aluminiums and the safest one to use. Um, but because it's a very fine powder, I'm going to treat it with respect. I'm wearing gloves and as I open it and measure it out, I'm going to put a mask on as well. And I've got these very dinky little mini scales um, and very cute little jug. And I've got my measuring spoons and because my total combined weight, dry weight of my fabric that I want a mordant, is 223 grams, so I'm going to do about 10% of that if I've got enough here. I think I, I think I have. So that will be about 22 grams. So let me put my mask on. Oh, I stopped counting and now I've gone over. And then take the mask off. When everything else is ready, I will dissolve that in some hot water, um, but you don't have to keep it on the heat. And then I will put my fabric in and leave it overnight and catch up with you tomorrow. So I've got this, I've got a utility room, which is great because I've got an old sink there and this old um, two, two ring um, sort of camping stove type thing that I think we got when our cooker wasn't working. And I've got a pan that I just keep for dyeing, that's quite important. And now I've got water simmering and let me show you about the, try and get the, so I'm just, um, just been adding the dahlias to there so I've got 
several of the orangey ones oh even the yellow ones going orange already and i think i've got one or two dried ones in there as well so i'm going to simmer that i'll just turn it down a bit um i'm going to simmer that for about an hour and then that will be my dye bath okay so it's been simmering for about an hour now um well almost an hour um so i'm gonna have a look at the color I'll just dip this jam jar in and see oh ooh, that's rather lovely isn't it and i think what i'm gonna do i think what you're supposed to do is you sieve out all the bits and then you've got a nice clean dye bath i'm just going to i've got my this is my fabric Sorry about all the rest of the clutter. So I'm going to wring that out. And then I'm going to add it to my dye bath. And just carry on simmering it for... I mean, look. I mean, almost immediately it's picking up a beautiful, beautiful colour. So then my tongs. Oh, so I'm going to make sure, because I'm new to this, I'm, oh, it's going to steam up. Okay, <laughs> as I was saying, because I'm new to this, I'm not sure whether I'm getting the right proportions of liquid and everything, but I think there's enough for that to actually steep in it. So I'm going to put the lid back on and leave it to simmer for a while and then I'll rinse it out and show you the finished result hello well it's got a little bit dull here it's, it's rather a grey rainy day um, but I just I wanted to show you the sort of real colour in daylight rather than put artificial light on so I have rinsed and washed out my fabric and here it is isn't that a beautiful sort of creamy orange colour I'm quite pleased with that, that I've managed to make that out of something growing in my garden and that it's um, it's fixed so I can use it in a project. And um, I think it would have, it's a little bit uneven and I think that's um, experience, not knowing how much liquid that I need and also because I'm so used to doing low immersion fabric where you deliberately don't move it around because you want to get uneven patterns that I probably didn't stir it enough either. But I do think that's a really beautiful colour. And um, so if I did it again, I might leave it in for longer or make it more concentrated or do it on another fabric and just to see what shades I got. But I just think that's so amazing that I've managed to make this from dahlias. So this is the eucalyptus that I've picked from the garden and I'm going to weigh it because you need to know how much um, your fabric weighs and how much your dye stuff weighs. Um, it's always quite hard to balance things like this on the scales. I think because I'm going to cut it up anyway, I'm going to cut it into pieces. And that will go on the tree. I'm going to get a bowl. Back to zero. Right, start again. So that weighs 62 grams and I think I'm going to do pretty much um, one on one so I need to use a piece of fabric that weighs about the same. So I'm going to chop it up even smaller and um, I'm just going to heat it up for an hour because I've read that if you over boil it um, the colour can, it doesn't sort of, it goes, a, it retains a better colour if you just um, simmer it for about an hour but then I'll put my fabric in and 
let that soak in it overnight and show you the result. So I've got my eucalyptus bits and they need to be heated, as I think I said, for about an hour and then left overnight to infuse. And I've got my dry fabric here and I've got three different sorts. I've got cotton, I've got silk bamboo and I've got pure silk. And I've weighed them so that because for the mordant you need about 10% of the dry weight. And I'm going to soak them now just in warm water to help soften the fibres. So I needed to make a note of the fact of how much. And I've for ones that are slightly different sizes, I've put I've got a code, I've got different colour safety pins, and I've got it written down what they represent. So I'm just going to so I hope that's that's given you a bit of a guidance into how you can do this yourself and as I say my blog post will have more details on it. So the first lot of dyeing that I did was the um, dahlias and I did it on cotton to begin with and that's come out this beautiful pale peach and then I tried it on two. I thought well what if the dye bath is, hasn't, is, they talk about it being exhausted. I don't know how you can tell when it is but I thought well I'll just keep trying see if it will work. And the next, next fabric I used was this um, silk and bamboo mix, which is what I used to make my ribbons. And what I particularly like about it is that it has a matte side and a sheeny side. And you can see how beautifully the peachiness shows in that. I think that's really gorgeous. And then, because I did have a bit of 100% silk, um, quite a sort of I can't remember exactly what sort of silk this is, but it's very fine um, and very light. And that's come out beautifully as well, but a bit paler. So actually the silk bamboo came out the richest colour. And then, so then I tried with the eucalyptus. I can't, apparently, I mean, there's so many different types of eucalyptus that it, the colour tones really vary. Also, I used quite small young leaves. Maybe if you use bigger, older leaves, you get a different colour. And so I wasn't quite sure what, I thought I'd get a sort of olivey green, but it's kind of paler than that. It's this sort of um, tan colour. And again, I used it on the, the same fabrics. So this is it on the bamboo silk, um, which I think is a beautiful sort of slightly greeny gold, isn't it? Let me open it properly. And again, I did it on the silk and I think that's very beautiful. And I do want to keep going with this. I want to get a bit more of a tonal range. So for a dark colour, I'm using this um, cherry tree bark from an old, um, a very old tree that we cut down. Well, we cut it down a bit of wood that's been in the garden for ages because we had a small cherry tree cut down because when we built our extension. And then we drilled holes in it to make it turn it into a book hotel. It's just been sitting in a corner, kind of rotting away. Um, but it's, and I've just got it soaking in some water. Um, and I hope that will produce quite a dark, rich colour because it's very rich in tannin, which works as a, you, um, you know, you don't actually need to use a mordant with that because it attaches itself to the fibres very readily. Tannin is, you know, if you have a cup of tea and you see that film in the bottom, that's what it is. So it's a very sort of persistent, um, easily obtained dye stuff. Um, and then what I really like is some sort of brighter green, which might be a bit hard at this time of year because certain plants like nettles, which you, if you harvest in the spring, you get quite a bright colour, but by this time of year, it sort of turned a bit more olivey. So I need to do a bit more experimenting. Um, some roots and things, you get particular shades of, shades of green. Uh, or I might have to be patient and wait till the spring. Um, um, but if you, I'll update you. I mean, you can follow me on Instagram. I'll probably put more updates on there. And, um, and then I'm going to show you what I'm actually going to make with these fabrics because you, you do see quite a lot of people who, who make these fabrics and dye lots of beautiful colours. You don't always see what they make with them. And I've got lots of ideas about um, the sort of art that I can turn them into. So that will be a future video. 
So I hope you enjoyed that and um, you're inspired to have a go. You can keep it simple and still get good effects. So have a look at my blog as well and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.